I praise the Lord this morning. I bring you greetings from the International Community Church in the city of Memphis, uh, where I'm one of the ministers. I also bring you greetings from my family, my wife, who some of you have met. I congratulate you as a congregation, the bishop and the leaders, for the great work that you're doing here. As I see the, the tent, and I see the coming up of the cathedral, I praise God for what you are doing. And the Bible tells us that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. And I, I, worked in the, I, I worked and I continue to work in the corporate world. And uh, I have seen a mission of success. But above all things, I've never seen anything greater than helping people and working with people. And that's why a few, I think it's like two or three years ago, I asked the bishop to come over and uh, uh, officiate over my ordination so that I can actually do much more in the ministry. Because I believe that really is the greatest thing you can do to help people, to minister to people. Um, I want to speak from the text in, uh, in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, uh, from verse 1 to 9. I have had a bad throat for the last two weeks, so you might find that my voice has changed a little. Uh, and I pray that my voice will be able to go the whole strength, the whole stretch, and I believe it will. Uh, the Bible says uh, in the book of Joshua from verse 1 to 9, chapter 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is eight. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River in the land I'm about to give you uh, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised to Moses. Your territory will send from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, and the, the, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I saw to their ancestors to give to them. Verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. That you may be successful wherever you go. Verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen? Amen. Have I not commanded you? The Lord is asking. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. These are great words that uh, we get from the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua is the book of conquest. It's a book where you move from where you are to go and capture and enter into what God has promised you. And if you want to know and learn how you can move from where you are to where you want to be and where God wants to take you, then I recommend to you to read the book of Joshua. Because you'll be encouraged to know that God rewards the obedience to his word. As you will read through, you will notice that in this journey from where you are to where God wants to take you, there is a path for God and there is a path for you. In the first instance we read in verse 2 and 3, where God has made a promise to his people. He said, I will give you homeland. He saw this, uh, he, he entered into a covenant, a firm, solemn promise with Abraham, and he said, I will give you a homeland. He repeated this promise to Moses, and now he repeats it to Joshua. He says, as I promised Moses, God has a promise, has a plan. So the first thing that God does is to, have, to, to commit a promise and a, 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 a plan, a covenant. He sows by his own name. And therefore, 
We say a covenant is one where one who has made the promise is not going to break it. Amen? And here it is God who has sworn. He's the one who has committed. He's the one who has planned. He's the one who has promised. And therefore the plan is firm. That is the first thing that God does. As I was thinking about this, something reminded me of what I'm doing right now. I have five children. And I have been actually thinking that I should set up a fund for them, which will help them to go to college. They are still very young. They don't even know even if I explain to them. They wouldn't understand. But I have a plan. I have a plan for them. They don't know about it, but I do have a and the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have. The plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord, when it comes to you, it makes you rich. It does not add any sorrow. Amen? Amen? The Lord has a plan for you, just as I have planned for my own grandchildren. The Lord has a plan for you. You might not know it. Therefore, I say the first thing that God does is to put a plan in place. I want to you to find that sweet place as a believer. A place of rest. Knowing that God has a plan for your life. Knowing that, uh, knowing that God takes care of your life. Knowing that God is concerned about your well-being. If you can find that sweet place of rest, where you can rest in peace, that God is aware of your future, that God is concerned about your future. That God is concerned about your concerns. Whatever worries you and keeps you awake at night, know that God is concerned, much more concerned about that. Amen? Amen. And therefore, you can find that place of rest and rest in peace and rest in trust that God will bring those plans to pass. It is Jesus who say, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That is part of the covenant. It is God making the promise. I said God has his part. God makes the promise. And the second thing that God does is to make, to walk with you from where you are to where the promise is at. Sorry to use a, a, a form of English that uh, is not common here. It's, it's at. That, we use that, but it's, it's not correct English. To take you where the, your, your promise is at. God has two things to do. He makes a promise, he makes the plan. Amen. The second thing that God does in this process of moving you from where you are to where your blessing is, or is at, is to walk with you in that journey. Amen. The Bible says, no one will be able to, to oppose you as long as you live. That is in verse 5. For I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not abandon you or fail to help you. It is God who opens the opportunities. It is God who sends the connectors. He makes the plan and then arranges for them to send the, the, the connectors. He sends, he opens the doors. The Bible says that when God opens a door, nobody can shut it. So many times, we are concerned and worried. But the Bible is assuring us that when God opens a door for you, when God has made a promise for you, when God is opening a path for you, no one, no one can shut it. And therefore you can rest in confidence if you are in God, that he will lead you from where you are to where he wants to take you. Therefore we say that God has two things he's doing in this plan. He's making a plan. He's making a provision. He has entered into a covenant. And therefore, he also takes you by the hand and leads you into it. The Bible says that God uses people to bring the blessings that he wants to bring to you into your hands. There's one verse that is already quoted which says, Give and it shall be given you. Good measure, running down and running over. Shall who? Shall who? So God will send people. God can rain manna from heaven. But most of the time, he will send people to bring your blessings. Amen. Amen? Amen? Remember what I told you last year around this time? Yes. That you have to learn to work with people. Because it is people that God is going to send. Amen. You have to develop people's skills. 
not only for your job, but even to be able to receive the blessing that God is going to send. Because God is going to send people. And we, we talked about five days. Who can remember the five days of uh, dealing with people? Anybody can remember the five days? The first day is, he said, you must be available. If you don't have time for other people, God will send angels and you will dismiss them. Because you say, I'm in a hurry and I will go. A very wise man said, with people, fast is slow and slow is fast. When you're dealing with people, fast is slow and slow is fast. You have to be available if you're going to deal with people. People must be able to access you. There are people who only take telephones from the people they know. You first of all pick your class and look at the number. And if it's a number you don't know, you don't pick. How do you know whether it's an angel that God has sent? You are limiting the number of your friends if only the people you know you take the, the calls from. You must be accessible. If you put your telephone on silent, or on off most of the time. How are people going to reach you? I know there are important times when you, you have to put your phone off. But there are people actually who put their phone on silent almost throughout. Uh, or, or something, I don't know. I, I, I always uh, find it very interesting because my wife would take her phone and uh, it would ring several times. Then when she takes it, she looks, who is it? And by the time she has finished looking, the other person has already cut off. So most of the time she's returning calls. I hope I'm not uh, stepping on your toe. And, and don't tell my wife what I say. <laughs> but I always find it very interesting. That you take a while to pick the phone. Then the next thing you pick your glasses and look at the number. And by that time the person has already decided you are you're not available. To deal with people, you have to be available, you have to be accessible. If you have no time for people, you will not have time for the angel that the Lord is going to send you. Sometimes we just wear a hair off to be in two business. Here we are not. We just wear a hair. People just think you, you have no time. Because we actually have created a hair around ourselves. People, we only meet people, they think actually you are in a rush. And you are not actually going anywhere, you are just going home. <laughs> To deal, God is going to send you. I, I remember that because I met someone yesterday and I actually reminded me of that. You have to be available, you have to be approachable, you have to be accessible. There are people who are uh, like me sometimes. I, I told you what my son used to tell me. He used to tell me that I was stone faced. So most people would think that maybe I'm angry or something. That's why I started to smile a little. <laughs> so that I, people can, I'm not afraid of me because they, don't, they are not thinking that I'm actually angry. So I try not to wear a very serious face. So I, I can be approachable, people can approach me. And uh, that is something you have to develop. You have to really create a face and a, a persona where people can find that you can actually be approachable. Because you, you, you can wear a certain air, which makes people think that either you only speak to certain kinds of people, or you are very busy, you are not available. So, and God is going to send people uh, to you. You must be a pleasant person to be with. You must be a pleasant person to be with, especially if you are not married. <laughs> if you are not a pleasant person to be with, you find very few people invite you for a cup of coffee or tea. If, if you are kind of a repellent person. I think that there are people who do business. If, if you are not a pleasant person to be with, you find customers, they'll go to another store. There are many pleasant people can go. You must be amiable. You shouldn't be abrasive and argumentative. God will send people. It is people who will deliver the blessing. Amen. God has a plan. God has made a promise. God has committed in covenant that he will take us. 
Number two, he has committed to walk with us from where we are to that promise. You find in the book of Joshua is actually a record of God walking from when he promised to where he delivers his people to the place where he promised them. Isn't that great? Someone makes a promise and also a commitment to carry you to where the promise is at or where the promise is. So ours is simple. It is to tune to the voice of God. To hear when he's telling us it's time to move. The Israelites would come to the place and he'd say, remove your tents. It is now time to move. It is for us to tune ourselves to hear the voice of God. The disciples of Jesus had toiled all night. They were fishing. These were expert people in their business. And they had caught nothing the whole night. And when Jesus came, he found them in a state of frustration, in a state of despair. They had caught nothing. And he told to them, move your nets to this side. Move your nets to this side. Remember this, we are experts in their business. They knew, they had tried everything they, they knew. And maybe you have been trying different things to resolve and to have an answer to, your, to the issues you're facing. And you are, might be in that place where you are catching nothing. Or you are catching very little. Now Jesus is coming to you and he's telling you, are you hearing him say, move your net to this side? It depends on what wavelength you are tuned to. Because unless you are tuned to a particular wavelength, there are voices and pictures going in the air. And depending on which one you have switched, that's the one that will come in on your TV or your radio. It's therefore important for us to tune to the voice of God. Jesus said, my sheep, hear my voice. If we can hear his voice, you will hear him tell you, this is the place you should go tomorrow and knock this office. These are the people you should go and speak to. You will hear his voice directing you. You will find God lining up things. But unless you are hearing him, unless you are listening to him, and you are not being argumentative, saying, I am an expert in this, and I'm an expert in this, I know this, and I know that. And say, because of your word, Jesus, although I have tried all it, and I know this business very well, I will try again. I will try again. How many applications have you made? It is time to make one more. It is time to write one more application. It is time to knock one more office. It is time to make one more call. And the voice of Jesus he says, cast your net to this side. Cast your net to this side. The Bible says, the Bible, the Lord is asking you, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not let failure, do not let the trials you have tried discourage you. Be strong and very courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Cast your nets to this side. So ours is, I, I, that's why I told you, you must find that sweet spot of rest where you can hear God. Because he's the one who has promised and he's also the one who will carry you. Most of the things that I've done which have been very successful, it's not because of my great education. It's because God sent someone and he mentioned an idea and I followed it through. Maybe he himself did not follow the idea. Just hearing the right thing and following and knowing that here might be what God is leading me to. Your part is to be strong and courageous. Bible scholars tell us that the Bible repeats 365 times. Do not fear. Do not worry. Do not be afraid. Be strong. Why 365 days? One for each every day. One for each and every day. Do not be afraid. Whenever you wake up in the morning, Remember the word of the Lord is telling you, do not be afraid. Do not fear. Because fear is a thief. Fear is a robber. It's going to take your energy away. It is going to make you weak. It is going to paralyze you. 
That's why the word of the Lord is telling you every day, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not worry. Do not fear. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not your own strength. Because when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you feel like not waking up. You must therefore be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen? When David had gone to war and his men, they came back and found that their village had been discarded and their, uh, their families had been taken away and their property. They cried until they could not cry anymore. The men cried until they could not cry anymore. The Bible tells us, David encouraged himself with the Lord his God. And it is when he found that place of encouragement, a place of rest, and a place he could hear the Lord, that the Lord told him, pursue and recover all. It is when you find that place where fear has been cast off, that you can now hear the voice of God telling you, pursue and you will recover all. Pursue and you will recover all. But in the midst of crying, you will not hear the voice of God. In the midst of crying. We must have to find that place where we find strength in God. Where we find encouragement in God. So that we can hear his word. Him telling us. Pursue and recover all. Amen? Amen? God is calling us to that place. A place, a sweet place of rest. Where we can be listening to him. He says, cast your head to this side and you cast and you get free. How you've been toiling how long? The whole night. And in a few minutes he shows you, put your head to this side. Because he has a plan and he wants to carry us to that plan. Fear is what is keeping many people from God. They say, oh, if I commit myself to Christ, maybe I will be backslide. You don't know. Until you come to Christ, you can't be afraid that you're going to backslide. First of all, you come, and then we can worry about whether you will backslide later. But you can't say, oh, I'm afraid that if I get saved, I, I might not make it. Fear can deny you. Fear can cause you not to do the right thing. The, the English have a saying, faint heart never won a fair lady. If you are faint heart, beautiful girls will pass near you and buy you. And you will not be able, you will be afraid. You're because you are faint heart. Faint heart never won a fair lady. And that applies to everything. If you are faint heart, you are always afraid, you are always shaking. A lot of good things will pass by because you are afraid. Or you think, oh, maybe I'm not qualified. Oh, maybe I'm not worthy. Maybe I'm not in that class. Who told you that? The, the, the worst that can happen to you is to receive the word no. Not the worst that can happen to you. And that's, uh, I mean, that's the worst that can happen to you. If you, 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 you ask for something and you are told no, that's the worst that can happen. Nothing more. But fear will tell you not even to try. That's why the Bible is saying you are part to this journey from moving from where you are to where God was to you is to be courageous and very strong. Why do you need to be strong and very courageous? The Apostle Paul writes and says, The Lord has opened for me many doors, but for every door there is an adversary. For some reason, and I don't want to go into that today, in every door that God has opened, there's always Goliath standing there mocking you. You can see that door God wants me to go, but Goliath is right there mocking you. He said, bring me a champion. You people, bring us a champion. He was mocking the children of Israel. Don't you have a champion? Who can fight? The giant is always standing at the door, mocking us. But God has promised that no one will be able to stand before you. The giants will be there. But those doors that God has opened, no one can shut. That is why you need to be courageous and very strong. Because in every door you will open, you will find someone trying to misplace your application. Someone trying to misfire your, your papers. Some shenanigans, something tries, someone trying something. Always something, nobody is trying to do something to your fire. 
But at the end of the day, that few will be lifted up. And God will give you the victory. Amen. Amen. Do not be courageous. That is your part. God has promised but your part. And my part is to be very strong and very courageous. God has promised. And has committed him in covenant. Ours is to enter into the covenant. The writer of the Gospel of John says, as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. God has promised we have to enter into that covenant so that we can receive the blessings of that covenant. Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done. God has promised our part is to enter into covenant. Because Abraham, when God made the covenant, Abraham committed himself to follow the instructions so that he can receive the benefits of that covenant. <laughs> Ours is to enter. As many as received him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. Therefore, we are the children of the covenant. We can claim the benefits. We can receive the benefits of that same covenant. The promises of God. So God's part, there are two parts for God. God has promised and has planned. God will carry us to that place of promise. Our part is to enter into the covenant by his son Jesus Christ. And two, to abide by the terms of the covenant. Amen? If we are going to receive those blessings, we must observe our part. Because he who has promised is faithful. It is us to find how we cooperate with him so that he can carry us to that place of promise. Be courageous and very strong. Keep the words of this book of the law. Not departing and meditate on it day and night so that you may be able to abide within the covenant. God has planned, but he's telling Moses, he's telling Joshua, be careful in verse 7 to obey all the law my servant gave you. And these are the words that we have been told in John. If you abide in me, and, I, and my word abide in me. This is repeated in the New Testament. It's the same thing. Be careful to obey all the law. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, pray whatever you will. Obedience is the requirement for success and prosperity. For us to be the beneficiaries of this covenant. And this book of the law shall always be on your lip. Meditate on it day and night so that we be careful to do everything in it. It is by us meditating on the word of God that we are able to abide by the terms of the covenant. I therefore want to encourage you to find that place, that sweet place, where you can find a rest because you have accepted Christ as your Savior and you are the beneficiary of this covenant where God has promised that I have a plan for you, I have a blessing for you. Where he says, do not worry about anything, but by prayer, let your requests be known. And God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. This is a promise for those who are already in the covenant. And we are the children of the covenant. Amen? Amen? We can therefore rest in peace, knowing that God has said that God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, pray whatever you will, and it will be done. And the book of Joshua is a record that those who abide in God, those who abide, who let the word of God abide in them, they can trust God that he is able to carry them from the place where he has promised to the where they actually possess that promise. Amen? Amen? Let us therefore surrender our struggles. Let us therefore surrender our anxieties. Let us therefore surrender our worries and everything that our stress. Because God has promised and God has provided and he wants to take us from where we are to where we want to go. What is your prayer? What is your need? What is your desire? What is it you want God to do for you? 
Remember, he wants to do it more than you want to do it. But he wants to carry you through a process. Amen? Amen. And there are reasons why he wants to carry you through a process. He wants you to be ready. That when you arrive there, you will be ready to take care of the blessing. The Bible says, God did not allow them to inherit the land quickly. Because he realized if they went and quickly, they would be overcome by the challenge of taking care of the land. He allowed them to inherit it by and by. I told you the other time, as you continue to build capacity in yourself, God will continue to help you to inherit those blessings that he has for you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Let us ask the, uh, the ministry team to come forward so that we can receive a prayer for everyone who feels fearful, who feels uh, discouraged, who feels that they want to find that sweet place where they can rest in God without distress, without worry, knowing that God has promised that he will take you from where you are to where you need to be. And he will walk with you all the way. And nothing, nothing shall be able to stand in front of you. Maybe there is something you have applied for. Maybe there is something you are looking to. Do you have a prayer request? Do you have something you are pursuing? Do you have a difficult challenge that you are facing? Do you have a lawsuit facing you? Do you have something that you feel you need God to come through for you, to help you, to carry you with you, so that nothing shall stand in front of you? Is there something you feel, I need God in this world? I have been discouraged. I'm so fearful. I'm worried. I'm stressed out. Do you need God to rekindle courage and strength in you so that you can be strong and very courageous? As the musicians start playing, continue to come. Continue to come. We thank you, Lord. For your word which has assured us again this day that you have a plan a plan to bring you to bring us for our welfare and for our future yes you have a plan for good and not for evil to give us a future and a hope you are telling us to be only strong and courageous not to be afraid and not to be discouraged because you are with us Cause us to realize your presence in our lives. Cause us to experience your, your presence in our lives. Because your presence will drive out every disease, every sickness, every illness. Your presence will drive out everything, everything, everything that's contrary to you. For you have said your blessing makes rich and it adds no, no sorrow. I pray that your people may be enriched, O oh Lord. That each one of us shall be enriched and be encouraged today to know that our concerns are your concerns. That you are more concerned about our well-being than even we know our concern. That you have plans we know nothing of for our good. Not for evil, but to give us a hope for the future. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We thank you for your goodness. Yes, we receive. We receive. We receive the healing, Lord. We receive the deliverance. We receive the encouragement. We are casting off our souls. We are casting off our burdens to you for you care for us. Oh, we are trading our souls, Lord, for your joy. We are trading our fears for your joy. We are trading our fears for your encouragement. We are trading our poverty for your riches. We thank you for the covenant. For indeed you have sworn and said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Where we, Lord, come to realize and experience the truth of those words that you have come that we may experience life and its abundance. We glorify your name, we worship you, we thank you. We encourage you to not worry. You're telling us to not worry about anything. But by prayer, let 
let your request be known. And God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you, we praise you. You have promised. And you have undertaken to carry us to that promise. You are calling us to be strong and courageous. You are calling us to commit to the terms of the covenant. You are calling us to abide by the terms of the covenant. That if we abide in you, and your words abide in us, we may indeed ask what we will, and it will be done. We have said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added to us. We praise you, we thank you. You have said you will be with us, Lord. And nothing shall be able to withstand. To withstand. No one can shut the door that you have opened. You have said that when we pass through the waters, or even when we pass through the rivers and through the fire, that you will be with us. They will not consume us. They will not overcome us. But that you will be with us protecting us and help us. We thank you. As I say, as many as have received him, as many as have received him, you have given the power to become the children of God. The power to become inheritors of the covenant. We therefore thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Chorus to keep the words, to obey the words, your word, for you are reward of those who are in obedience. We thank you. It's calling us, Lord, to keep your word in our hearts so that we may be able to walk in the heart. We thank you, Lord, and praise you. Glory for your name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness.